Hello, my name is Maisie Harris. I'm one of the curators in the Department of Photographs at the Getty Museum, and I'm so happy to welcome you to today's conversation. <clears throat> I'm going to share some images with you. This, ex this um, conversation is prompted by the exhibition Carrie Mae Weems, uh, Dawood Bay and Carrie Mae Weems in Dialogue, and the exhibition is on view at the Getty Museum until July 9th. I hope that you'll all have the opportunity to come to see it. I want to thank thank the sponsors of this exhibition, um, both in the organizing institution Grand Rapids, the Grand Rapids Art Museum, and uh, also the staff at the Getty who helps to make this exhibition possible. We so often um, think of artists in isolation. I think um, often at museums we do monographic exhibitions, and so I think this exhibition organized by Grand Rapids is a really wonderful opportunity to think about the give and take um, between artists um, and the ways in which conversation is so much a part of the artistic process. We're in a time in this country when dialogue, I think, sometimes feels difficult. It doesn't feel like there's much opportunity for talking or for listening. So I'm glad that we have this opportunity today to listen to our two speakers, and then we'll have a Q&A. And I look forward to hearing all of your questions and comments. Please use the, use the Q and A function um, as part of Zoom um, to to give us your questions, and we'll be monitoring those, and we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers at the end of our discussion. And um, also note that you can use the closed captioning feature, um, and that's also at the bottom of your screen to um, to have the text as you're as you're listening. Um, so as I mentioned, my name is Maisie Harris. I have a bit of a summer cold. So forgive me for, for my kind of scratchy voice and my cough drops, um, but I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to share this exhibition with our audiences. And this is a project that really helps us think about the, the reverberations of the past in the present. And, and because of that, I really want to make sure to acknowledge um, that the, the the land that the Getty inhabits um, was stewarded by the Gabrielino and Tongva peoples, and we, we want to honor their labor and their, their community. Um, I'm delighted that today we'll be joined by um, two, um, two wonderful speakers, uh, Ron Platt, who curated this exhibition for the Grand Rapids Art Museum, and Kinshasa and Conwell, who contributed to the beautiful exhibition catalog um, available through the Getty store. Um, and she is Deputy Demer Director Emerita of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and culture. And I'd like to welcome um, Kinshasa and Ron to join me on screen. Thank you both so much for being here. Um, uh, this is a, an exhibition that's about artistic dialogue, about community dialogue, and it's focused on two artists who met in 1976 at the age of 23, and they've been friends and, and um, colleagues since. And um, Kinshasa, you moved um, to the Studio Museum as deputy director soon after this in, in 1980, and then were, de were director of the Studio Museum at Harlem. So I, I would love to hear from you, your impressions of Harlem in this period um, and, and the kind of conversations that were fostered um, in the communities there. Thanks, Maisie, and uh, such a delight to have been invited to be part of this. And I, I want to publicly thank Ron Platt for being the person who invited me to the party in the first place and invited me to write for the wonderful uh, catalog. Um, Harlem is and was a destination, a, a, a mecca, and a place that artists often found. Uh, and one of the fascinating things about Harlem then and now is that the Harlem in the minds of those who live and work and make art there is very different from the, R, the Harlem in the popular imagination, particularly in the media imag uh, imagination. So in that imaginary, Harlem was always a place of danger and, and, um, and New York to an extent was that as well. We know the famous time when the former president of the United States, when New York had a fiscal crisis, allegedly said drop dead. He didn't say drop dead, but he may as well have. 
Um, so as you look at this beautiful uh, photograph by Dawood Bay of four children um, in, in front of, the, of, a, of a former um, restaurant and club, they are these beautiful, kind of self-absorbed in a great way, uh, human beings as children are. But what I love about Bay is he doesn't make a fuss about the fact that, you know, I am looking at Harlem children. They're just beautiful they're, and they're beautiful, they're well-dressed and they're self-possessed, which is one of the things that I think um, Daoud and Carrie uh, carried through their work over the years, the self-possession of their subjects and Carrie's um, case she was a subject at, at, at many points in that same self-possession. And this is a great exterior shot that places you in this community, uh, a community with a history of music, of dance, of art, of culture. And he presents this to us in a way that pulls us in, welcomes us and makes us wonder, what are these young people thinking? And I wonder now, what are they doing now? And then he also does that in interior spaces. Um, he has the ability to capture uh, the intimacy and um, the dialogue among figures. And when I look at this, I, I also think of one of his great mentors, Roy de Carava. Roy, as many of the audience will know, one of the US, uh, one of the greatest US photographers and a, a photographer who um, not only in terms of his subject matter, jazz, Harlem, the world, um, brought viewers into a world that again was not captured with the same kind of respect and dignity uh, as uh, as in in he he did that in a way that was different. He was also a leader of other photographers. He was the first head of Kamoinge Workshop, which is another another kind of dialogue. It's coming together in the Kikuyu language, and and so. People like Ming Smith, who has a wonderful exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art right now, and Buford Smith, and um, and later uh, photographers in Harlem and elsewhere, uh, Corinne Simpson, Azure Cowens, those people were influenced. But uh, um, De Carava's influence, I think, can be seen in this picture. It's all it's it's all Dawood's, but it also captures that same sense of intimacy. And the last thing I would say about this, the trust that. Bay establishes with his subjects. Not everyone can get that up close and personal with another human being and have them look so lovely and comfortable. And that trust is a hallmark of Dao's work. That's such a wonderful point. I think there's something about people who are able to make portraits that's um, you know, really about their personality to be able to have people sort of be comfortable and not give them that sort of photo face that we so often give when we're um yes. when we're on camera. Yes. Um I I'm I'm so um grateful to you for contrasting these different modes of working the kind of street image and the more intimate um image and, and grateful to Ron for mixing all of these types of works into the exhibition. Ron, I was really struck when I got to see the exhibition in Grand Rapids that you included so much of this early work. Um, I know some of us are more familiar with the later material and I, I would love to just hear from you about some of these projects that, that the artists um, made that were really a product of dialogue and how um, you, you came to, to think about um, working with some of these specific series. So I should explain that um, within the exhibition, there's different sections and each section of the exhibition contrasts um, um, series by each of the artists. So how did you, how did you come to make some of these difficult choices? Um, they were difficult, but they were, they were a lot of fun. And I, uh, Maisie, thank you for, um, giving Kinshasa and I this opportunity and what a delight to be here and, and to get to talk with Kinshasa Holman Conwell. So, um, this is a great, uh, image to begin with because we were looking initially at early work that, um, Dawood was making really around the time and just after he and and Carrie met, um, he was sort of discovering who he was as an artist. And um, he was sort of photographing people as he found them in Harlem. He might 
make just a couple suggestions about a gesture or something like that. But this is this is work that he was making a few years after. Still black and white. Still um, people in the uh, in the community, but. Um, in these pictures, he's he's beginning to dialogue more with his subjects. And I I know, for instance, that this couple he originally saw on the other side of this street that's kind of blurred out. Um, and he asked them to move and um, you know, spent a little time with them, getting um them to interact with one another. So uh and to um sort of interact with him so you could get this kind of intimate but really relaxed uh, beautiful shot of this young <laughs> young loving couple and um the dialogue between Dawood and his subjects would would deepen over time and um I you know I just think it was really fundamental both for him and for Carrie um as young artists uh starting out um you know they were um engaging with lots of different people and their ears were open as much as they were talking they were listening and you know um you know one of the great things about dialogue is that you you come into a conversation not with your mind made up um but with a willingness to like really listen to what the other people other person or other people are saying and sort of like you were saying Maisie kind of antithetical to um um sort of what's going on um on the national stage and this uh, and in this series he was giving some of the images he was giving a print or a negative he was giving a print to the subjects sometimes yeah these these are polaroids so he was actually you know making like small contact prints and and giving them to to the subjects i love that because you know they had to have sort of been okay with it you know or they would have yeah, <laughs> demanded a, demanded a change yeah absolutely mm -hmm. um and then and this is a series that you had worked um, worked on earlier with Dawood. I yeah, for, uh, I worked with Dawood on this on the project when I was a contemporary art curator at the Birmingham Museum of Art. Um, 2013 was the 50th anniversary of the notorious um, 16th Street Baptist Church bombing, in which four um, young girls. Um, were killed in in uh, a racist bombing attack, and um, you know Dawood had known about Birmingham's very troubled civil rights history all his life, and he had been wanting to make a project in Birmingham, and he'd been coming to Birmingham for several years um, prior to the Birmingham Museum inviting him to make a body of work to mark the 50th anniversary um, of that awful event. And um, he really established relationships and sustained dialogue with a large community of people, um, including the subjects of the photographs, but also um, people at the Civil Rights Institute, um, this is um, was made in a church. It wasn't made in the 16th Street Baptist Church. Um, it was made in a church where Fred Shuttlesworth, who was an, really uh, an icon of the Southern Civil Rights Movement, was was a pastor. And um, let's let's uh, move to the next slide. For, for those who aren't familiar with this series, can you explain the um, the the premise, the pairing of these two um, photographs? Sure. Um, he invited people living in Birmingham when he made these pictures in 2012. Um, boys and girls who were the same ages as the young people who had been killed, and then adults who were exactly 50 years older. And without saying so explicitly, um, he created these pairings. Now, these people, um, Wallace Simmons, and Eric Allams, who you see here, they didn't know one another. Um, but Dawood photographed, oh, upwards of 75 people and um, used, I think, 
there were 32 people, ultimately 16 diptychs. And he had this uncanny idea of pairing images that suggested um, that these people may have been related. Um, perhaps it's a grandfather and a grandson. Perhaps more poetically, um, this boy would have grown into this man if he had lived. Um, this man was this boy, perhaps, um, in 1963. Um, so there's, a, I think, like a real poetry to this project um, that um, really kicked Dawood's work up uh, to a whole new level when he when he began um, when he began and produced it it's so powerful yeah to, to think of those intervening years and, and what was what was lost um and thank you for bringing this um this sort of behind the scenes image um which i hadn't gotten to see what are we looking at here well here's eric who we saw in in the previous diptych um with his grandfather who, who came along for the sitting and dawood um looking at a bunch of polaroids and sort of looking at them all together. So um, Eric has a sense of what the project is and sort of what Dawood is looking for. And um, so Dawood sort of invited him in to the processes and it's it's just gives a sense of, of his relationship um, to his subjects and um, just to the way he sort of moves through the world. I think is is um, a real openness um, to um, to um, possibility. Um, let's. Uh, we've been talking a lot about um, Dawood's work, and I'd love to hear about um, uh, you know Carrie May yeah. Weems and yeah. how how she also sort of engages the community, but in such a different way. I mean, what I love about the the way that you paired these is you really start to see the you know, distinctive approaches um, to to these kind of similar problems or similar questions about what history, how history, the repercussions of history kind of st stay with us. Um, so, you know, that was a project looking at the Birmingham bombing. And can you tell us about this series that, that Weems made and how it sort of grapples with some similar questions? Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up um, quickly after this, but uh, um, just a few years before Dawood made the Birmingham Project, um, Kerry uh, spent, a, I believe, a semester or the good part of a semester um, in Atlanta, and she created a project that also looked back to um, troubling events in our nation's history, but um, she actually uh, opened it up sort of worldwide. And what she did, she also worked with members of the community, but what she did was she reenacted um, the photographs. And um, she's, a lot of them were set in a classroom like this. And I think she was both sort of instructing the students that she was working with and other members of the Atlanta community and also the viewer about how how history is is a construction and how the images that we see are are in fact you know constructions and um so this is a an image the tragedy of Hiroshima um that shows a woman carrying caring for someone who survived the the nuclear blast and um it's uh, it was interesting how they both were reenacting these key moments of political violence, but in their own very distinct ways. One of the things I think is um, you really notice when you move through the exhibition, obviously the scale of, of many of these images is quite large. For example, I'll show you, this is another view of the installation. So you can see the scale of the images. And one of the things, that you experience when you're moving through the exhibition is how you feel complicit or you feel um, really engaged and connected to the images because of the scale of the images and because both of these photographers so often show their subjects looking directly at the camera. Um, and so that that makes you feel as though they're they're looking directly at you or, or you know, you really feel here, for example, that you're at the table. 
Um, Kintrasha, could you talk about the way that these images have dialogue kind of built into them and how dialogue is both the subject and the the, the kind of action um, of, these, yes. of these works? Yes, yes. And I want to say one little thing about some of the rich comments, um, and I will definitely come to this, the rich comments that um, Ron, Ron um, made and how they connect to both Dawood's and Carrie's interest in signal moments in history and interested in history writ large and the archetype of black experience as an archetype that speaks to everyone. So while it was those beautiful little girls who were murdered, those were, they, those were America's children who were killed at Sunday school um, um, by, by, by racist this violence in a year, 1963, when Medgar Evers was also assassinated, but also in a year when there was the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, a moment of great um, potential. Um, and, and that was meant to be 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation. So within the Black experience is embedded the sense of history, milestones, historic events. And when artists Kind of embrace that and 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 see that it 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 also speaks to me of what both Dowd Bay and Carrie Mae Williams do and it's, it's shown here in Carrie's stunning series, the Kitchen Table series from 1990, which really broke open for I think most appreciators of Carrie Mae Williams, introduced them to her and to this woman who took intimate moments and. She talks about how this is, though she is the figure, this is not her story, but that it is the story of women, and it's not just the story of Black women. And what, while there's something recognizable in Dowd's work about, Dowd, you know, Birmingham in 63, there's something recognizable for those who know human and, 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 and women, womanist experience, that's recognizable. So it does not have to be a particular woman. One could think that could be me, that could be Carrie, that could be my neighbor. But um, those, those notes she hits, those tropes of intimacy, concern, closeness, yet distance. She's an observer, but also a participant. Um, and if we can, uh, I think there's another, there's a shot, yes, so, um, what I love about this in particular, you know, you see, you've seen the, the woman as the observer of a group, something of a guardian of the group, but this is this bold, self-possessed woman. And that is very much what Carrie can do in her work. And you see later when she does her series where she places herself in international contexts, you know, in these large cities like Rome, that that of course she's there. So this. This, 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 this young woman has the audacity to say Rome is mine, just as Harlem was mine, just as Los Angeles was mine, just as Syracuse, New York is mine. And, and what I think one of the things that make these two artists so important and so I think influential is that they do portraits, but they break out of standard portraiture. They do landscape, but they break out of, of landscape. And um, there was a kind of um, departure of, Daru doesn't make himself the subject, but he is the subject in that it is his interpretation of the history that imbues the work in Birmingham, the work uh, that he did um, with, with, with the students um, that was shown at the Addison Gallery of American Art. So, and again, that relationship of subject and author, if you will, um, is there. But going back a moment to, let's go going back years, no, you don't have to go back in pictures. What a place like the Studio Museum in Harlem did. Individual artists were their own creators of themselves. But what a place like that did is it surrounded people in a community of other artists who were the supporters, the critics, um, so that by now, as we fast forward to now, the fact that Ming Smith has an ex exhibition at, 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 at MoMA and that we have two brilliant artists who, who, who are MacArthur Fellows, who traveled internationally, whose work is beloved and, and, and known, the germ of that 
was in an institution, a community-based institution, which not unlike a place in LA like the Brockman Gallery or Self-Help Graphics or the Women's Building um, or Spark, th these places where artists and community created together and where one could take chances and know that if you're in Kamoenge, that Roy DiCarava will support you, that, that Danny Dawson will be your compatriot and that the great Deb Willis, who to this day is the mentor, the colleague, um, the contemporary of so many artists so that the, the, the fruits of the labor of these brilliant artists um, were first planted at the Studio Museum, which, which continues to be at the center of creativity in the US. And as it rises in a new identity on 125th Street in, in its new renovation, it continues to be that center, that welcome place where artists in the artist residence program and otherwise are at the core of that experience, a place where Ron Reed came walking into every exhibition so that you, and, and where artists like Sam Gilliam or Jake Lawrence or some of the other giants were, were, were all there and whenever you have, when you are launched with that kind of care in, 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 in LA, when I'm Brockman and, uh, and uh, Alonzo and Dale Davis or, at, at the, um, or someone like Greg Pitts or Charles White launches you, you, have, you, you come protected and you come armed and ready for the world. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. Um, sorry, it sounds like it's echoing a bit, but the way in which there's a kind of fostering and, and supporting of each other and, and pushing back um, or critiquing um, each other as well. And I think that is such a good reminder that, you know, the Charles White, the good reminder of how important it is that these people are serving as teachers and teaching younger generations and um, continuing to, to share that knowledge and, and pay it forward. Um, when I'm looking at these works, I'm I'm really reminded. I, I I kept thinking about when I was working on this exhibition these the backgrounds that people bring to their work, um, and you know to think of Carrie May as someone who had really thought about dance and performance um, and the way in which the body, the kind of the the gesture becomes so powerful in her work. And for Dawood, um, how music is such an important part of his life and how that kind of rhythm. Um, that kind of attentiveness to rhythm is is really there. Um, for you, Ron, what were the the points that pulled you into these projects, and like what got you started on? I love this idea of of putting two artists together and and thinking about the ways that their their works um, uh, you know tackle similar issues. What was the germ of this exhibition for you? Was it was it thinking about specific projects, or or how did you get started thinking about about this this exhibition? You know, I was I was fortunate to work on on the Birmingham project with Dawood. It was really um, so. Uh, it was uh, it was a it was a really important for for me personally and professionally, and 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 what it did for that community and with that community was um, I thought very powerful. And I'd gotten to know Carrie a little bit as well. Um, not as closely, but um, you know, I'm sure I was influenced by just like the lack of di dialogue, you know, in the American American um, landscape, and and politically, people just weren't engaging with one another, and um, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure. And but when I when I did get the idea, I I sort of brought it to Dawood first, and he was like. I'm in. <laughs> and then it was talking with Carrie. And I remember we met her uh, at her house in Syracuse and um, just just sort of started talking. And that's where the idea of sort of um, pairing their work into five sections where you could see how they were addressing similar themes, but in their own, you know, unique ways. And um, how dialogue and you know we've talked a good bit about dialogue at this point but how it, it was sort of woven in to the project but i i know um for both of them i think that dialogue sort of extends to the viewer and that um 
I I see they, you know, they I think they want to create work that's uh and I think they do create work that is is universal. I mean, um they're representing almost exclusively black subjects and I think that comes out of the fact that they're both black, so it's it's uh their most immediate, you know, community, but also I think they felt a sense of responsibility um from their forebears, from the folks in Kamoinga from the an older generation um, to kind of represent um, the black community authentically um, in real ways. And I mean, I, I'm always astonished with this work from around this period by by um, Dawood, where he, you know, he didn't know this person and he spent about 10 minutes with him. And yet I mean, how many pictures do we have that we say, that really looks like me? That's what I, and he gets it, you know, with a person in 15 minutes. I mean, it's a gift, but it's also uh, uh, the dialogue that he established. Um, oh, and let's, let's go on to that next picture. And I... This is an early picture of, of Carrie's. It's uh, probably the year they met. And um, really wonderful scene um, in Harlem. When I first, one of the first things I asked her was, did you stage that? Um, and in fact, she didn't. But um, the first time they saw the exhibition was was in Grand Rapids uh, the, the week before it opened and they're walking through and they stop at this photograph and Dawood looks at it and he looks real closely and he points at the, a figure who um, is in the foreground there. Does everybody see the pointer? Oh, you had it right on the guy. But anyway, there's sort of uh, that that fellow right there that was like, I photographed that man. He was in one of my, you know, individual shots of, of people in Harlem. And Carrie said, yeah, we were out photographing together that day. Um, so they really did have a real close connection and a dialogue. And it's just amazing for them to sort of make these connections and that the work, you know, the work, it's there um for them too and and um and for us to to enjoy I love that uh, that you yeah two people go out photographing on the same day and and make such different types of images um, absolutely yeah I think both I think both of you touched on something that I think is really important um the the both professional and personal and I think so often we think of our profession as separate from our personal life and so I think to talk about how important it is that those are intermingled and that um you know that there's that kind of support network that that boosts you in both um in both spaces and thanks to um Francie Scanlon in the chat for saying support is the core of all artistic self-expression it's true self-expression comes from um feeling like we have that ability to to make statements in the world. Um, well, I, I'm happy to continue to talk with Ron and Kinshasa. I think there's so much more to, to think about with these images and these series, but we would love to hear from all of you as well. Um, what are your questions about the, these series? What are you, oh yeah, there we go. Someone is ready right away. Mm -hmm. um, so for the rest of you, what are your questions? What are your thoughts about these series and about these, these incredible speakers that we have joining us today? Um, Donald Sanchez asks, what were the circumstances that led Dawood to pick up a camera and who was a major influence in his photographic journey? Um, Ron, do you want to tell us a little bit about that um, background? I believe that he got his first camera when he was early teen or maybe a preteen from an uncle. And... Um, there, I there is an image of uh, in one of his catalogs that he took of some school, uh, schoolhood friends um, mm -hmm. when they were, were just little skinny teens. Um, that's very charming, and um, I think he probably he you know his family was very tuned into um, black 
history to civil rights history. And, you know, my, so much of what we know about civil rights comes through photographic images. And I, I, I think that he became more and more interested. And, um, you know, there was a sort of seminal show at the, at the Met um, that Kinshasa wrote about in, in her essay. And I'm uh, forgetting the name of it right now. Harlem on my Harlem mind. On my mind. Thank you. Yeah. Harlem yeah. on my mind. Yeah. Um, even though most of the, none of the images were actually photographs, they were mostly posters, but um, actually Dawood went to that show. I think it was 69. It was. And, and he was going because he, there was all this protest within, within primarily the black community about the lack of sort of black photographers and the lack actually of photography in the show, but he was really drawn into it. So just early on, he was very open-minded. Um, he was, yeah, he was really curious all the time. And you were very right. His family was supportive. And one of the, the, the you know, it's one of the most controversial shows ever, right? And it's still being talked about all these years later. And he talks about how he didn't want to cross the picket line. And he found a moment to actually go when he didn't have to cross it. But but his, as you're very right, Ron, his curiosity um, drew him in, and, and part of, it's interesting, given what he did later, part of the criticism then was that when photography was shown by African Americans, it wasn't shown as art. It wasn't shown um, the way maybe someone like a Siskin, who was someone who influenced um, Dawood, but he moved beyond him, but that, you know, he, he did his own Harlem document, um, in, in the mode of Siskin, but the works of photographers tended to be blown up almost like um, poster-like, whereas the images of the, of the white photographers were shown as, as photographs. So the great license was taken. Another very important part of that though that was that one of the, the photographers who got the most attention was um, James Vanderzee. And, and, and in terms of the photographers one's things that we talked about, Roy, Vanderzee, though known for very many things, particularly a great chronicler, right, of, of African Americans. So Adam Clayton Powell, senior, um, father of the great um, uh, Congressman Powell, um, the, the daughter, um, he did a lot of death images and funeral images in his, in his um, early work. And so a Blanche Powell, who was a this beautiful daughter of, of of the minister, his own his own family. He had and he had a whole. He, I know you're you're um, in Massachusetts. He had a whole life. Vanders he did with very different kind of pastoral photographs before he became this urban photographer and had a studio in in Harlem. But that native curiosity that 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 Dawood had was was part of. What drew him so wherever there was photography to be seen, he he would go to see it. And you're very right. He he was looking at photography as a kid. I mean, what kid goes to you know what teenager goes to an art exhibition, right? But um, that that was part of it. And, then, and I I love that you mentioned that you know the politics of the the presentation of the black figure, the black body, black images is roiling around the whole time in all of the years of these artists. And they were they were attuned to that. They were not deaf to that. They also, not in contradiction or a contraindication to that, but they also continued uh, to do their work from this kind of central space of self-expression um, and confidence. And But again, going to your central point of dialogue, I think it helped to be in circles where you could turn to uh, you know, a Corrine Simpson or 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 or, or Deb Willis or Jules Allen or Monkey Pender Hughes or anyone else to say, hey, you know, Ming, tell me about this. Let's have a conversation about this. And one of the other things I want to say is I love how both Carrie and Dawood raise each other up, right? I, I mean, I, I when I saw that in her chronology is you know 1976 met Dawood Bay. That was a signal moment in her life uh, story. And um, when they were, did the wonderful uh, interview um, at the Getty, the, when they had the wonderful uh, dialogue, talking, that, that, was, that was just brilliant. When they're talking about how, um, how their connection to each other 
help them grow. And the last thing I'd say on this point, if, you, if you've heard Carrie talk, she talks not only about her work, but she talks about other artists. Um, get thee to an archive, my friends, and find the, the uh, presentation she did at the National Gallery of Art maybe 10 years ago. She gave this extraordinary talk that was allegedly going to be about her work, but most of the time she talked about other artists. And it, it was this great honor roll of artists in, in, in various genres. And she gives that generosity. And that is, I think, a hallmark of both of these, of both of these folks. Thank you so much. There's so, <clears throat> there's so much there. Um, I just want to touch on some things that really jumped out at me from what you're both saying. One is that kind of um, these kind of different histories, right? You had this history of studio photography where we went, we used to go and get our photographs taken in spaces like the, the Van Der Zee studio, um, these kind of interior shots, and then merging that with um, Life magazine with these images, um, civil rights and other images, journalistic images that you would see. So this kind of moment in which we're moving from the studio photography, portraiture, and bringing that out onto the street. And I think you can really see in both of these artists how both of those histories kind of combine. And, and thank you for talking also about the, the generosity that they bring both to their subjects and also to, to other artists. I think that's that's um, such a key aspect of, of both of their work. Thanks to everyone who's um, just chiming in. Um, again, um, we're grateful if you can use the Q&A function for your questions, and that way we can keep everything together. Um, uh, but we have some, we've been talking, I think, a lot about the kind of cultural history and kind of cultural impetus for these projects, and we have some, some good kind of practical questions, as you so often do for photography exhibitions. Um, one question is about how old um, Dawood and Carrie were when they did the work in the exhibition, and um, that um, I'm going to have you do a little bit of math. Um, I'll just say again that they met. Let's see. What year was it, Ron, that they met? Um, 76, was it, Ron? 76 when they were 23. They're the same age. age yes, they were both born in 1953. I wouldn't remember that time, Ron, being so much younger. Not. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so um, thank you for the anonymous attendee for um, that, that kind of crucial question, which is to think about how old we are when, when work is being made. You know, are these, mm -hmm. some of these images that we see um, in the first section of the exhibition, this image, for example, is when they're younger artists really kind of filling out um, their, their way, making both of them really making street puffs. I think when you see the exhibition, you see even though they're both making street photographs, um, they approach that very differently. Again, I, for me, I'm seeing that Carrie is really attentive to a lot of gesture and Dawood very aware of light, the, the way that light um, is, is kind of cutting across spaces. Um, so you'll really see in the course of the exhibition how their, um, their, each of their styles kind of matures or changes over, over the course of the exhibition. So thank you for that question. Um, a great question about the pragmatics of making the kitchen table series. How did how did um, that work get made? Did she work with an assistant? Is the camera on a timer? Ron, do you know do you know some of those answers? Yeah, um, it it really is her kitchen table, um, and uh, she was. Uh, let's see, was she she was in Massachusetts as I am now. Um, she was teaching, and I think it was. The pictures were made in Amherst, where uh, UMass is, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, Carrie, if I'm wrong. Um, she used herself um, as a sort of stand-in, and I liked how Shasha said, as a Black woman, but also as a woman, first and foremost. There's a universality, I think, to that body of work, which is, I think, why it is so um, kind of revered uh, mm -hmm. internationally. But um, she enlist uh, she enlisted friends and um, children of friends. Um, yeah, there was a timer, but she didn't have an assistant. She wasn't working with an assistant, and she realized that um, you know she knew what she wanted to portray, and so she felt like she was the best available. Um, subject to be represented in all the pictures. And I love how in that one that we showed earlier where she's looking right at the camera, how she's sort of, what is it called? Breaking the 
breaking the fourth wall or I, I'm mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. the exact term, but it's mm -hmm. like, you know, she's like, and now what about you? <laughs> Looking mm -hmm. back at the viewer, mm -hmm. um, tell me about yourself. Um, I've been, you know, I've been showing you what my life is about. Um, what do you think? What do what are you all about? I, I, I love that. It's 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 challenging in a way, but not in a, a sort of a, 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 a aggressive way. And I wanted to include this installation shot because when you see the exhibition, when you see this series, there's the um, the these textual components, these panels, um, and it's a kind of a narrator um, who has this incredible sort of way of speaking that makes you feel um, a, a deeper narrative for these for these photographs that you it feels kind of enlivened by this this narrator who's, who's talking really directly about her her life. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for that question. Um, I think it's always wonderful to think about how the artists sort of make these things happen. Um, Jacqueline Taylor asks, and maybe Kinshasa, this is a, a nice question for you. Um, Jacqueline says, there's a definite common theme in the photographer's works of depicting um, Black people in an empathetic and authentic way. Um, Jacqueline's noticing that Weems is being exhibited um, <clears throat> And for the first time in Germany and Berlin and in Frankfurt, um, and there's a great exhibition in, in Spain. Um, it, and the question is, is there a universality to these photographs that goes beyond race? And one of the people in the chat said something about the regular being universal. Would you ever, what do you think about that word universality? Um, is that a word that resonates mm -hmm. with you, Kinshasa? I think both, um, it's going, looking at writers who talked about that, I think both, um, Tony Morrison and Ralph Ellison's work has been talked about as work that is universal because it starts in its specificity. And I think what's wonderful about Carrie's work is that it insists that, um, you know, quietly, powerfully, that the experience of a Black woman is, is the experience of women. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm glad that the issue of race has been introduced because I did want to say something related to this. These artists, thank God and may they live forever, that they have, have lived to have this incredible attention, totally deserved, you know, major awards, accolades, exhibitions, you know, I guess Dawood is in another exhibition um, in LA as we speak, in addition to, to the Getty. And, um, you know, they, they've been shown at major museums uh, around the country in, in, in major um, art, um, expositions and biennales around the world. I, I, I got to tra travel with Carrie and others when her show um, was at the, the, the Car Biennale and, and actually to be with her when we went to Gory Island and to witness her witnessing that, that, uh, that, that, that portal of no return and to see that. So that there's what, what they make you, they make universal the notion of the death of children is a universal thing. Those parents who are mourning those four girls, there are, there are somebody now mourning four children who died in, in war somewhere, yes? And um, so all, all of that, but what, what is telling in our American, our US art scene is that their ascent critically, well-deserved, brilliant, had more mountains to climb than did that of some others, particularly contemporaries. I mean, one thinks of people who, who do posed moments like a, a Cindy Sherman, an incredible artist, uh, and the, the kind of acclaim that she got and when she got it versus say when Carrie did. So Carrie now retrospectively, and she's having another retrospective, has has had this attention also Daru. But I, I, I long for the world in which the, the artist working now gets that in, 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 in contemporaneously with 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 their peers and i'm i'm delighted as this is probably the third time i've mentioned that ming smith is in an exhibition at the museum of modern art but that these things are still exceptional that's the challenge for american art that's the challenge for our museums our critics our, our curators I, I was i was in a panel for an art prize um in january with with my predecessor mary campbell and as we sat at this table with these very renowned and wonderful um people and she described how we worked together in Harlem when the studio museum was in a rented loft 
over a liquor store and a Kentucky Fried Chicken. It kind of hit me. I'm like, oh my God, that's right. That's where we work. That's and that's where Carrie and um, Dawood met, and and that's where uh, David Hammonds and um, Jorge Rodriguez and Charles Abrams and a slew of other artists were before the museum moved to Central Harlem. So the they never they they don't talk. They foreground as they should as artists, their work. But I think it's incumbent on us as appreciators, as curators, as scholars, as art workers, as museum professionals to look at what we do to make dialogue truly what Ron talked about at the beginning and what you talked about, Maisie, in a time when we need to have conversations about race, about art, about society, to make those conversations as open as, as, as possible and, and as, um, as welcoming as possible and as challenging as possible. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Um, sorry, it's sounding a bit echoey, but um, thank you for that. I think that's a, a really um, helpful segue to this next question. And just for those of you um, joining us, we have only a few minutes left. So if you do have other questions, please throw them into the Q&A. Um, We'll be, we'll be wrapping up soon, but um, thank you so much, Kinshasa, for that. I think that connects with this question that we have from Valerie Richards about the influence of P.H. Polk. Um, I think there's so many um, photographers. Um, Valerie says that this these some of these photos remind her of the photo, The Great Day in Harlem, with all the jazz musicians, um, <clears throat> you know, gathered together. And I think one thing that was fascinating for me working on the Kamoinge exhibition and then on this exhibition. In the Kamoinge project, you saw um, the way they used the Black Photographers Annual and, um, and the events that they did to um, honor the older generations of photographers and, and bring in younger generations of photographers. So at those events, you would see, you know, a young Dawood Bay there um, interacting with um, these, these older generations. Does anyone want to speak specifically to Polk or, or to this, this importance of kind of being aware of, of the legacy of earlier photographers? Can I just say, and then I, I will let my dear friend, Ron Sisson, of course, let him, right? I'll let you talk. Um, that, that, you know, one looks at the, 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 our, the photographers who people revere, and I think, you know, um, Mr. Van Der of course, mentioned often, Roy, I can't say enough about but 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 P. H. Polk and those photographers who photographed out of university. This finally, um, people are understanding the importance in this country of the historically black colleges and universities and places um, like uh, Tuskegee, uh, Talladega, Talladega, Howard, Fisk, where um, many of these uh, photographers resided and where their work, which those of us who went to those um, schools, like I, I went to Howard, if I didn't say that, my Howard friends would come and beat me to a pulp, but um, they, they were the kind of always there folks, that theirs was the work that you always saw, but it was not unlike finally Carrie and um, Dawood's work. It was not raised up as, um, as, as work to be paid attention to. And surely no one has done more to make sure that Polk's work at Tuskegee, um, that um, the work of course of the great um, Gordon Parks has gotten its, its, its moments and probably Gordon Parks because he was a photojournalist and was published in, in, in major uh, magazines was no more, but, but, but Polk was, was, if you were an African-American, you would have seen his work. If you knew anything about art, and 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 you know, hats off to places like ICP in New York, International Center of Photography, and the kind of uh, work what they did in in looking at that, looking at that. But Polk, yes, is 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 everywhere, and 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 also the I'm blanking on his name, but the great uh, um, photojournalist in Pittsburgh, T. Harris, um, and th there are many, 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 many more great civil rights uh, photographers um, like Monita Sleep. Who did the Pulitzer Prize winning photograph of, of Mrs. King at Dr. King's funeral? So what, what's so great about this show in, in and of itself is that it opens up that conversation that the questioners ask that we engage. Yeah, 
Uh, thank you. Now that's 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 uh, terrific to think about. Um, you know, one of the things when you when you brought up Polk, um, it reminded me of of uh, something Carrie and and I would um, brought up occasionally, which was that um, you know they they knew Polk, they knew Van der Zee, you know, um, they knew all the Kamoinga people, um, but they all, you know, Dawood also, like, he loved Abaddon. Um, yes. Sander, um, he liked Mike, Mike Disfarmer, um, and um, he and Carrie knew all of these people, and most, uh, I don't want to go out on a limb here, but I would say that very often, white photographers, they didn't know any of the black photographers, maybe, um, maybe Parks. And I, I as, um, as Kinshasa says, because he was published. Um, but, um, you know, I think both Carrie and Dawood were very, very indebted to their forebears and recognized yes. that they're standing on their shoulders. And, and, they, you know, revered these mostly guys and Ming Smith, um, and and a few others. But I think they also see it as a responsibility that they too are bringing along um, yes. another generation. And it's it's remarkable to see, although there's so much progress yet to be made, um, how much more welcoming. Um, the quote unquote art world is uh, for young artists of of um, of color, galleries, collectors, um, a lot of whom have have been scrambling um, in the recent past to make up for um, the blinders they were wearing, you know, for, for yes, so yes. the near years of neglect. And one one can't I'll leave this conversation without mentioning mentioning Lorna Simpson. Um, and I think in, when you look at someone like Lorna, who um, who who like 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 Carrie and and um, um, Daoud infused the narrative as well as the as 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 the pictorial. And so when you talk about that dialogue, I, you know, I would love to see. This is a brilliant show. I would love to see also what's the dialogue of 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 uh, Lorna um, with uh, photographers who also, you know, whether it's Cindy Sherman or whether it's the the um, art artists who who use language and and narr narrative. Tell me Barbara's last name. Come on, help me, man. Barbara um, Kruger. Barbara Kruger. Thank you, Barbara Kruger. I mean, one of the reasons I, I love that uh, the Studio Museum did the Decade Show with the great impetus of the late great Marsha Tucker. And Benito um, is that we had all those artists did come together. I don't know if they talked to each other, but Barbara Kruger was at the, the studio museum, um, as and then other artists were at the new museum and the the, the the lamented Museum of Contemporary Hispanic Art. So what 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 I, I I think would be fascinating is if what the artists have done over the years, if that's joined, if institutions could could do more. Of course, we need curators for that, um, Ron and Maisie. And shout out to LaRon, uh, your colleague there at the Getty, that because he did a brilliant job with the interview of, um, of Carrie and uh, and Dao, which was quite which was quite wonderful. Absolutely. And and working on the Johnson archive, which I think will bring forth Forth this, you know, a lot, a lot more photographic imagery that that's so important right. um, for for yes. so many people's lives. Yes. One um, one thing that I think comes out of of the dis of the the discussion that you all had helps us lead it into one last question. And we're um, unfortunately running out of time, but I do think it's it's such an important part of this work that I want to address this. Um, <clears throat> that one of the writers, Catherine Medzer, um, asks about working in dark rooms. And I do think one of the ways that these artists most kind of pay homage to this legacy of other photographers is their incredible care as printers. I mean, these works are beautifully printed. 
very carefully constructed, made things. These are these are things um, that we experience with our bodies, um, and that they have really put a lot of work into thinking about how to to make these as as fine objects. And I, you know, I was wondering about you know Carrie May as a printer for other photographers. And Dawood continues to be really, really mindful in, in the Underground Railroad series, in the mm. exhibition, um, the, the darkness of that kind of print is, is kind of core, um, the visual kind of a- aspect of the, of the print is core to the conceptual work project. Um, so Ron, can you talk to us about these artists as, as makers, as, as dark room junkies? Um. I can't speak so much to the dark room itself, but I can definitely talk about about their um, insistence that they're making objects, um, that their work is not just what you're seeing, but that their their pictures are are objects in and of themselves. I think they both look back to Roy de Carava's example. Um, and, um, first of all, his sort of extension of, of, of black as a color (laughs) and, and with that, um, the idea of, of, of blackness, um, and, um, that it sort of extends into the picture and the surface of the picture. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, and Dawood, um, I think formal issues, um, about the camera, about the dark room, about light um, were just fundamental to him. And as you mentioned, Carrie was um, earning earning money uh, very early on printing for people like Todd Papa George and uh, I think Winogrand. And, you know, so she was like really um, learning uh, and 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 incorporating that knowledge um, into her own work, um, and they did it in very individual ways. And uh, again, you know, it's just part of the what becomes the voice of the artist that's that's so important. And what makes them such well-rounded artists, I think, is their sort of openness to the world, uh, to other people. Um, they, they, they work in series. And so I think they have a sense of like, um, setting out, uh, to answer questions they have of themselves. And then, um, the, the, the fact that they're, they're making sort of like tactile objects, um, to, um, send out into the world, uh, for lucky people like us to interact with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to um to, to get to I think I said that was the last question, but one one more because I think it really um it's a it's a nice way to to kind of lead us out into the world. Um I think you know we've been thinking about objects and um I th- one of the questions Chris Cook asks um a, a, a big question. So I'm I'm going to to say, read the whole question here. How do you envision the future of racial representation in the art world? What changes or developments would you like to see in terms of representation, inclusivity, and dismantling systemic barriers? And Kinshasa at the Studio Museum, at the Smithsonian, um, this has really been kind of some of your life's work. Um, how, do you, how do you send us off into the future as we, um, as we look from this project and, and move ahead? Let me thank you so much and thanks. I could go on forever, but I won't. And, and I'm so grateful again to Ron for bringing me to the party and for you to, for extending it. I want to speak the name Kwame Brathwaite in answering this question. Um, Kwame Brathwaite also has a brilliant son, but Kwame left us um, this year. And this this shows the power of a photographer and, and a vision. He is really credited with putting forward in the world the notion of Black is beautiful. Right? People think, well, what was that? An advertising scheme was that, but but um this this notion of our visionaries, our photographers, Skurlock was one of them here in DC, um, who uh, create a world that is right there. Part of the job that is left is the job, as I said earlier, of the rest of us, 
the photographers are doing their job, you know, they, they are creating these extraordinary um, photographs and they are moving beyond the, 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 beyond the dark room and they are doing the digital and they are looking at um, multiple ways of you know, looking through, excuse the pun, various lenses. But I think for, pu for publics to clamor urgently, but not con confrontationally, to see more representation for collectors, you know, because because museums need collectors, and I even 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 Getty, I think, doesn't have an endless uh, trove of money to just uh, only collect um, objects. And I want to do a little shout out on the um, Johnson uh, archive, to, you know, of course, Johnny Johnson, Ebony Jet. That's also um, a, a collaboration with my former museum, National Museum of African American History and Culture. There is much to still be uncovered and unpacked. For those of us who was mother's milk to look at Jed every week, every, every month, that's not true of everyone. There are stunning photographs in that archive, which Laurent will tell you, which my colleagues at the at my former museum will tell you. Let's 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 unearth those. And the other thing when you were talking about Ron is so, you know, those relationships among photographers, I think there probably are others. I knew, I know of the one way. I know that, as, as you said, Ron, that that um, basically Dawood is like, Avedon is a great photographer. And he will talk about Avedon. I'd like to hear a photographer who is not, not Black saying, Dawood is a great photographer. Mm -hmm. Car I learned this from Carrie Mae Weems. Um, I think Deb Willis, who I've named probably three or four times, is someone who, and in her, in her, place at, at NYU, but also out in the world. Uh, she has established for younger artists that notion of finding spaces to lift up work. And I think we need we, we need more of those because there is a natural, if, if there is such a thing, there is a natural way that artists can talk to artists, that artists can talk to the public, as long as it is authentic, right? So, so, so when um, Rick Lowe did Project Row Houses, no one said, you must help single women, you know, find a place to live. That came out of his practice as an artist. And so I think those authentic moments when artists tell us this is a way for a dialogue, we need to listen closely. And, I, and you know, some of us think it took a minute for our larger institutions to get with the program, but that moment has arrived. So, you know, the sky may not be the limit, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty exciting moment for possibility, and I'm 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 optimistic about that. Thank you for that. I'm um, not always optimistic, so I appreciate that. I mean, you know, I, I know at the Getty, this is probably only I think maybe our fourth exhibition that's looking at. Um, black photographers fo focused to look at black photographers. So, you know, these large institutions small have a lot of work to do and small institutions have been leading the way for many years. Um, so indeed, a, lot of, indeed. a lot of catching up yeah. to you. Um, that's a, a nice way, I think, to to end. And I just want to this this image um, in the exhibition by Carrie Mae Weems, I think, is has really been one that's continued to stick with me as I've been thinking about this exhibition. You know, we often feel like we've gotten off the right path in this country. You know, I think we we knew that there was, you know, dreams and goal for this country. And then often it feels like that went askew. So thank you to, um, you know, artists like Carrie Mae Weems and Dawu Bay and, and thinkers like Ron and Kinshasa for, for helping us to like muster our courage to, to carry on and, and go for the goals that we've set for ourselves. I've been really touched by the work um, of our community partners who have done um, an exhibition um, in inspired by the work of Carrie Mayweems and Dawu Bay. And this exhibition is on view at um, Band of Vices Gallery in Los Angeles until June 17th. So those of you in Los Angeles, I hope you'll see this exhibition. Um, as it says here, this is um, young artists associated with the Black Image Center, with inner city arts, with LA Commons and Venice Arts, making portraits, street scenes, just really taking this, the energy and the and the visual engagement of, of Carrie Mae Weems and Dawu Bay and bringing it to, to their community. So um, look for projects like this in your your own community as well. I think, you know, a lot of these smaller institutions are really, um, are really pushing us ahead, propelling us forward. So thank you to Ron and to Kinshasa. Thank 
thank you to the artists who made this incredible work. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. We wish you a happy summer. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.